The following is a presentation of TFNN. Trade what you see with Larry Pesavento. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, Larry Pesavento. Okay, looking good, Billy Ray. Feeling good, Lewis. Uh, we're going to start the show a little differently today because Europe is pretty much shut down, as I understand it. Uh, we're going to look at the uh, junk bond index, the HYG, High Yield Junk Bond Index, ETF. You'll notice that it has completed a perfect ABCD Gartley padding, pattern exactly at the 78.6 level. With a hanging man uh, pattern, this tells us that this market should start to uh, back off a little bit, folks. I don't know if you know this or not, but there are three there are three firms in the in the world now in the United States that control about 25% of all the market, and that is uh, BlackRock, Vanguard, and State Street, and uh, that's basically the result of. Uh, them working with the uh, Treasury Department and also the Federal Reserve to uh, do the work of the Federal Reserve as they put money in to the market, into the junk bond market and some of the other markets that it's using. Um, they, it's, uh, they, they, well, it's just amazing. They own 22%, folks, of the S&P 500. Boy, and, and they own one-fifth of, of the bank stock. So this is nothing to be messed with. They have trillions and trillions of dollars. So the reason why I bring this to your attention is you have to put stops in here because when these people come into the market, you can't stand in front of them. They're just uh, too, too powerful. So make sure that uh, you certainly do that. Now, we've had a big swing, as Tommy mentioned on the previous show. We got up, uh, we opened a little bit higher um, Sunday night and immediately dropped 100 points. And we've, we've rallied back almost 61% of that. So uh, there's not too much going on other than a little bit of volatility. But the most volatile one last night, from my perspective, was what happened uh, in the uh, in the crude oil, because it was really, uh, it was really quite spectacular. Uh, crude oil opened uh, slightly higher by about uh, 80, by about 80 cents. And then what it did, um, the feds are buying bond ETFs, and they're buying just about any ETFs that are out there, folks. So as old, uh, what is his name, Warren Buffett said, these are weapons of mass destruction. Well, they're mass destruction if you're on the wrong side of them. That's for absolute certainty. Let's bring this up here and uh, take a look at this. This is crude oil last night, folks. Look what we did. Uh, after we opened a little bit higher, we rallied up to almost uh, – $25 a barrel. We got up to 24.75, which was a 382 retracement of the high that we made on Friday, and then we went all the way down to 2200, and that was a big ABCD pattern at uh, $22 a barrel. So it's very important that the crude oil on the bullish side must hold above $22 a barrel because if it doesn't, that tells us that we're getting ready to head down towards the next leg that could be down around 14 or 15 dollars. A barrel. Now, there's been an agreement, supposedly, if you can believe any of that. And the market, here's a perfect situation here. You have, you have very good news, but bad action in the market. You know, you would think that the crude oil would be up a little bit, but in fact, uh, it is, it really isn't. So we'll see. Um, yes, the five-hour uh, oil chart is a Gartley, uh, but it, it, it certainly is. I don't think I have it, Terry. I I did it last night, but I don't think I saved it because I was trying to get uh, catch up on a little bit of sleep. So we'll see that. Uh, why could why could uh, why could spot go to 15? I think I have that chart, Mr. Z. Let's just take a little bit here. We're going to have yes, Bill's going to come up and believe me, he has a good in. He has really understands the oil market, folks. He worked for those folks for you know many many years. Let's see if uh, we can. Uh, Get this up here for you, and we'll be able to uh, be able to show you what we're possibly looking. Yeah, here we go. I think I've got it here. Here's the chart. Now, remember, folks, uh, this is a uh, from the eyes of a technician. I know deadly squat about this, that, or whatever. But you can see here, uh, you know, we've got an ABCD structure that would take us down to about fourteen dollars a barrel. Uh, all we have to do now, you know, we're, what we did last night. 
That 22 level, folks, was a 78% retracement from the B level we made back on the 30th up to the high where we got to almost $30 a barrel, 29 and change. That 78% level comes in at $22 a barrel. Since we've hit that, we've rallied over a buck and a half a barrel. But, you know, we still have a potential if we break that. We could be easily looking at an ABCD down, and that would be a three drive to a bottom pattern. Plus, you know, you would uh, you know be in record lows, I believe, other than what we had in in 2000 and or excuse me, 1999, when we hit uh, just about uh, 11 dollars a barrel. I remember that very very vividly because we were having a a seminar. Mark Douglas and I were having a seminar right here in the little community where we live. We have a beautiful uh, recreation room, and we had about 12 people from the uh, uh, area. Well, it was more than that, it was about 15 people that were traders and stuff. So we did a a one day session where we traded live, and our trade of the day that day was uh, you know buying crude around that. $11 and change, and I know we, we came really close. We got to right near the bottom and had about a dollar and a half rally, and that was the bottom. And from there, it went to $144 a barrel. And I remember that one because that's when Goldman Sachs put out their report that gold or that crude oil was going to go to $200 a barrel, and we all know how that ended. All righty, let's move on to the next one. I've got some charts here to review other types of markets that we've been in. This is the market. This comes from our friend Tom Hugard, Trader Tom. Let's get this up here and take a look at it. Oh, this is the 2002. Look at this. We had a perfect 50% retracement, as you can see. Uh, those of you that like uh, you know, Fibonacci numbers. And then we're going to go to uh, the next one, which was 2006. We'll get this one up here to take a little uh, look at it. Uh, these are very, very close. Yes, I can do copper today, Terry. I'll be happy to do that as soon as I finish here with this. Uh, here's the 50% uh, uh, retracement. Went a little above it. Uh, dismissed the 61% retracement. And then, of course, you know, we know what happened then. It was uh, much, much lower. The next one we want to look at is... Uh, just a second, folks. I need to... Uh, my mouth is rather dry. We're going to look here now at the 2008 bear market, and uh, you'll be able to see that was the 50% uh, retracement, a little above it. The, the one we hit uh, today, or in the S&P, we did go to 0.54, but uh, some of the other indices, like the Russell and others, uh, only made the 3.82 retracement. If in fact that's in, in fact that's what they're doing. Okay, let's look at the. Uh, 2010. I remember this one very, very much because I was heading down to uh, Clearwater, Florida to visit Tom in, in July of 2011. And that big ABCD that you see there was completing at a 382 retracement in July of that year. And uh, that was uh, that was a really bullish sign. And, uh, you know, we went from, uh, oh, gee whiz, I forget where we were, but we went all the way up to almost 30,000 in the Dow Jones. So that's pretty much what we're looking at. If you're not currently using the TAS Profile Scanner when looking at setting up your trading opportunities, then your arsenal is short a mighty weapon. The TAS Profile Scanner is a standalone piece of software that instantly filters over 2,500 global financial markets such as stocks, ETFs, commodity futures, and Forex. Headed by Steve Dahl, TAS understands that in today's technological world, the use of top-flight software applications and technical analysis expertise is essential to successful trading in today's market. You also gain access to the webinar that Steve Dahl and Tom O'Brien just hosted, The Best Way to Use the TAS Profile Scanner to Profit. This webinar archive is available for all subscribers immediately upon signing up. All new subscriptions also come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Start your subscription by visiting the front page of TFNN.com today and you'll find the TAS Profile Scanner under the Services tab. Sign up today. 
Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay Area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up-and-coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LLC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. TFNN is launching an open house for our Tiger's Den. For a limited time, you can get a 30-day free trial to the Tiger's Den. Just enter promo code OPEN at checkout and pay nothing for 30 days while you try out your Tiger's Den membership as part of our open house. With market volatility at an all-time high and people all over the world working from home if possible, TFNN is hosting an open house in our Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is an interactive chat room that runs all day where other tigers and tigresses discuss trading ideas with the hosts and members along with charts and current market news as well as live access to the charts the hosts use during their programs join us for the tiger's den open house begin your den membership today by just entering open at checkout and pay nothing while you try things out for 30 days for all the details and to start your den membership today visit the front page of tfnn.com don't miss out on the tfnn tiger's den open house taking place now sign up today Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. All right, folks, we're back. I posted the chart of the nearby copper contract. We briefly went below $2 a pound back there at the end of March, and we've rallied uh, 35 cents a pound, which is uh, quite a bit. We're sitting right at the 382 retracement right now uh, in the copper. So if you're interested in buying it, I would certainly wait for a little bit of a pullback in here. So we'll be able to uh, sort of look at that. So we'll watch it. Now, the next one I wanted to talk, we'll get back to the crude oil because it had such a big move. And I wanted to, uh, you know, illustrate that that Gartley pattern that we were looking at last night. And uh, you'll get this up here right now. And uh, here we go. We'll have Bill Meridian coming in here in about uh, 10 minutes, which will be fun. You'll notice the big ABCD. That's a spot on ABCD, folks. That measured to 2200, and uh, that's what we hit. Uh, we rallied up uh, to 2480, back down again, and we just popped up about a dollar barrel here uh, in the last uh, two hours. So that should be a very, very important number. If we go below that number, you can see, you know, going below that 78% level which actually comes in at 21, uh, 21, at 2150, uh, that would be extremely bearish. Uh, that means that this thing would be heading down to that larger target that could be out there. Now, should we exceed the uh, $29 a barrel level, that high we made back here on April the 3rd, that's going to tell us that, yes, these, uh, these uh, reducing demand or reducing supply that they're doing in Saudi Arabia, Iran, and Russia is going to work and we're going to hold up. Now, gasoline prices here, in uh, Tucson have held up relatively well. We're still above $2 a barrel, if you can believe that. I thought we would be about a buck and a half, but we're not. So we're going to see uh, what's happening. Um, as far as someone's asked a question about the virus, folks, I know a little about a few things and nothing about that one. So uh, I hear different things, uh, you know, but I don't listen to that stuff. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I just try to look at the charts, and that's really, really what I'm trying to do. The biggest thing that's happened here, folks, is what the Federal Reserve has done. They've come in, and they have really, they have literally opened the vaults with everything they have. Plus, they're going to make some things up, too. So uh, when you, these announcements come out, if you're on the wrong side, just make sure that you have stop protection in there. And you could still be right.
and uh, uh, you could still get hurt. You can see uh, some of this. Just look at the swings we had. We had a $19,000 swing Friday in crude oil future, folks, $19,000. It's really, really something that uh, uh, what, what's going on there. It's, it's just really, truly, truly amazing. So how it's all going to end up, I know long term we're going to be fine. But we'll be able to see that. Wow, a dollar fifteen. Where in the heck is that? That must be up in um, Montana or something. Whoa, wow, dollar fifteen. That's a that's a dollar a barrel, a dollar a gallon more than what we pay here. So that's a that's a pretty big one. All righty, let's get back to the gold. Okay, uh, okay, Colorado, Lone Tree, Colorado. Well, that must be up there where it is lonely. So we'll have to. Uh, Remember that place. Let's take a quick look at the gold market, folks. Uh, this will only take uh, a very, very short period of time, but I believe uh, this is what we're looking at here. I want to look at the long-term chart here. And uh, we have hit the 78% retracement level of the high that we made back in August of 2011 when we hit $1,923 an ounce. Uh, then you see we went into a bear market when it dropped, uh, you know, just about $900 an ounce down to uh, 1050 there where we had the beautiful three drive to a bottom pattern. Then we had the higher bottoms and then the big move up. And this is where we are right now. I believe this could be a major, major top in the gold market. Uh, but the problem is, folks, with that big swing that we had over the last few days, when you go up 100 and down 100, those, well, within 100 points, you, you can really have some blow offs. The one that is the most troubling if you're bullish and uh, is really, uh, uh, really, really uh, on a hard, harder, harder note to be bullish about is this silver contract. And if you take a look at the silver contract, all we did when we were when gold was up there, you know, blowing out the highs of August by about a hundred bucks, you can see here that silver can only make a 61 percent retracement. And the other thing is, is the open interest in these has not been increasing. You know, this is there's not a lot of players coming in. The other thing that's very important is the fact that gold is selling for about fifty dollars an ounce more here in the United States than it is over in London. And we haven't seen that before, so that's another one. Also, the platinum contract. The platinum, I think I have the platinum. Platinum. Let me get this up here to see. Yes, I do. You can see the platinum contract. Get it up here so we can take a look at it. All it's been able to do is to, uh, you know, make a 38% a retracement since uh, the low that we made here in March 16th at 560. Now, that's $200 an ounce. But when you stop and think of this, folks, we've got platinum at 751. It used to sell for more than a thousand dollars an ounce premium over gold, and now what is it doing? It's a thousand dollar discount. Shut the front door. I mean, things are really reversed. I guess because there's not going to be any automobiles using uh, combustion engines anymore. Maybe that's the case. Maybe not. I don't know. Okay. Um, Someone asked, they're always asking question about these piggies. I don't know why everybody likes the piggies, but let's take a little look at them here. And uh, I think, uh, you know, we've had Rich on here uh, last week, and uh, oh, here we go. Let's get it up here. Here is the, uh, we had a heck of a move and then a back off, but I tell you, it, you have to be, this is the uh, crude oil of the meat complex. You can see here, we had that move up into the gap. We went and filled that first gap, but now we're backing off. Folks, we've got to hold support at uh, right around $47, because if we don't stop at 47 you know, we could go. And the problem is, yeah, the Smithfield has shut down their plants and a couple other big ones. Folks, we're going to run out of meat here in these markets. I can tell you that right now. So uh, I'm not saying to go out and buy a whole bunch of it, but there's not going to be a lot of meat out here in a few weeks because there's nobody, you know, slaughtering the animals and there's also nobody, uh, you know, preparing it. So it's going to be pretty tough just by just by simple supply and demand. I know in our market here, you're only uh, able to buy two meat items when you go to the store. So we'll be able to see see what really uh, 
what's going to happen to that. It's going to be very, very interesting whether we think we're going to be in this for a very long time. Personally, I have, uh, you know, we've been in this month now, so the first month hasn't been been too bad, but um, I understand they stretched out the statute of limitations on uh, uh, manslaughter for about three months, so I don't know if that's going to mean anything for the people that are standing in the house all the time. Okay, um, okay, someone's saying something here about uh, the uh, Goldman Sachs are abandoned their most bearish calls and see U.S. stocks gaining. Boy, there's what you like to see. Goldman Sachs telling you that the clear that's all clear to go, just like they did when the uh, oil was at a buck forty four, uh hundred and forty four, not a buck forty four. Eight stay tuned for Bill Meridian, folks, eight seven seven nine two seven six six four eight. Larry Pesavento watches the markets 24-7, and now is a great time to try out his daily trading service, Fibonacci 24-7. Larry publishes videos and charts for subscribers throughout the week when warranted, and every weekend he puts out a thorough report covering worldwide markets, futures, commodities, and currencies with Fibonacci retracement levels, possible trading setups and zones, and stops and targets for all recommendations included. Larry applies the principles he's developed over decades of trading while analyzing a variety of markets for subscribers. To see for yourself the types of videos, charts, and analysis that Larry provides for his subscribers, sign up for Fibonacci 24-7 today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. You'll also gain instant access to Larry's archived subscriber webinar from earlier this year. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. If you're a trader in the market looking to find the path that leads to maximizing profits while decreasing risk, then now is a great time to try out Dave White's daily trading service, The Path of Least Resistance. Through the use of options and equity trades, Dave advises his subscribers on a daily basis of the current market conditions and what possible trade setups are on the horizon. The Path of Least Resistance is published every trading morning, often with updates intraday when initiating trades or closing out positions. Dave White has advised his clients of some outstanding winning options and equity trades in recent months, and now is a great time to try it out for yourself. New subscribers to the Path of Least Resistance receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. See for yourself the types of options and equity trades that are available by signing up for the Path of Least Resistance today by visiting the front page of TFNN.com and selecting the newsletter tab. Sign up today. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed Designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, uh, I think we have Bill Meridian on the line. Bill, are you there? Good morning, Larry. Good morning, Bill. I just uh, realized about three minutes ago that uh, oh, Gmail has yeah. shut me down for some reason. I have no idea why. It's the second time in two weeks. So I had all your charts ready to go, and I don't have them now. So could you just uh, give the folks an idea of, of what you're 
talking about today. And as soon as I get these charts up, I'll I'll post them for TFNN. Shall, but I I, I have no other way to go. Shall I so why don't you, them by Skype? Uh, you, you know that would work. Yes. Why don't you do that? Get started. And I I, I yep, Skype is working. Very good, Bill. Thank you yeah, so much. I'm I'm on with TFNN. So if I send them to TFNN, they don't go to you, do they? Uh, the, well, TFNN can put them up. Al is very, very uh, adept. I'm can, sure he can put oh, them I up. Can so screen share in Skype. Of course, I forgot about that. If I screen share, will that help? That would be great. That would okay, be totally be, awesome. Um, I tell you, all of my frustrations in this business come because of these darn computers. That's for sure. Uh, well, I think I know what you mean, but. <laughs> How are you doing uh, being uh, stuck up there in New Jersey by yourself and not being home? Pretty tough, isn't it? Well, it could, could be. I, you know, situation could be worse. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's no question about that. There. Now, um, okay, what just happened? Well, uh, that I don't know. You'd be asking someone that knows little about technology, that's for sure. I haven't seen anything pop I up. Had them, I had them up on the screen. Can you I see don't know. that? Well, uh, I can't see it. Uh, yes, there we go, Bill. We've got game, buddy. You're ready to go. Okay. Cycles Research, um, April 13th. As usual, we're in the Mr. Larry show. Okay. Here's okay. the summary. Uh, stocks, uh, the low was on uh, March 24th. I still believe I'll go into the reasoning behind that. Bonds, according to my work, we have one week down. That's this week, followed by a rally. And gold is likely to rise in 2020 to 2,000 or more, and uh, that's that's a very interesting. I've got a lot of slides on gold, but anyway, I wanted to. Uh, I think the most important thing that I have told anybody, I, I emphasize this in my messages to institutions, that uh, you know, in 299, 2000, Felix Zuloff from Switzerland was visiting us in Abu Dhabi, and I said, Felix, you know, there's going to be a, is a year ending in zero coming. 2000, 20 years ago, I said, the only thing these guys know to do to solve the situation is to throw money at it, to issue excess credit, because they all went to the school of Keynes. And I said, what's down and out but commodities, oil and gold? And he agreed, so equities down and um, commodities up. And uh, you know, it's, this is the way the economy works. And if you look at that graph, which uh, you see the low at 75 to 85, and then you had the dot-com bubble, a drop, you know, the drop is similar to what we're having now. Then you have a rally, the housing bubble, then a drop. Then you have this, what they call the everything bubble. And uh, you notice how it's higher highs and higher lows. It's still in an uptrend. And this is why when Timothy Geithner left the Obama administration as Treasury Secretary, he said, I just expect this to happen again because he understood the way the system works. So they issue more and more credit. And what happens is it takes more credit to lift the market each time, which means they has to issue more debt. And they just have one... Uh, one bubble after another. And the uh, the only question to be asked is, um, where is all that credit going to go? And I just got a call last two, two weeks ago. My friend of mine does collectible watches in Manhattan. And he said the price he's getting these unbelievable bargains of people needing to raise cash. And they're selling collectible watches at half their market value. So you're expecting another drop down and then another rally to a higher highs. And this, of course, will directly affect gold. So I think that's a very good graph to keep in mind. And if we go to the next slide, we'll see the, the cycles that have been pretty reliable. And for those who are listening for the first time, those cycles are extracted by my software, which is proprietary and exclusive. And it came after five or six previous attempts. And uh, it takes the data that is uh, the most current data and assesses which cycles are profitable and which are not. It drops out the unprofitable ones, puts it back together. So there you see the weekly and there you see the, uh, you see the monthly. And these both topped out early in the year between uh, in the last half of January. And of course the top in S&P wasn't until February, but now they point up as you can see, except we might have, uh, you see the weekly peaks here on uh, um, in a few days, and the monthly sort of turns flat. So, but I think we've got one more weak rally this week, and then I think it'll pull back. But it won't make a new low. So once you've got the cycles, you then go to the technical analysis. And of course, when I started studying, and you, Larry, we only had technical analysis. We didn't have cycles. 
There have been two volume thrust buy signals within three days. These occur when 90 percent or more of the trading volume goes into rising stocks. This has followed this uh, has followed the reverse, a series of down thrust days. And by the way, you can do these in uh, volume, breadth or price. There have been two cases of two such up thrust days within three trading days. The S&P was higher one and two months later, 80 to 85 percent of the time. After six and 12 months, the market was higher 90 percent of the time. This is sustained buying. And by the way, if these occur within, uh, I forget how many days of an all time high, uh, it's even stronger. So the 80 to 85 go goes up into the 90s. It's just um, too much selling followed by too much buying. Price movement carries the same message. After 11 trading days following the low, the S&P 500 has retraced more than 40 percent of its decline. The 30s and 2008 rallies could not match that move. In the past, rallies that went past this point were sustainable. So uh, and also let me just see the next one. OK. So uh, we've already if, if we retrace more than 30 percent of the decline, then the odds are it's not going to go back and retest. And uh, we'll move to the next page. In terms of the Elliott wave theory, the up move, of course, of five waves, the corrections are three waves. And many Elliott waivers, when the market made its low in uh, late March, they were pointing to they, they thought this rally would be wave four up and we got a wave five down. Well, as Joe Granville used to say, what everybody knows ceases to be useful or the obvious is obviously incorrect. If many people are saying that, it's probably not going to happen which means you're not going to get a fourth and fifth wave. It was ABC. ABC occurs in a bull market, not in a bear market. So the uh, S&P stopped just uh, at 38.2 percent retracement of the prior decline, but now it has exceeded that. It's up to 50. So the 38.2 percent is gone. 38.2 is important because, as Tony Plummer says in England, if it crosses that threshold, it means the underlying situation has changed. But another study shows that if the market just rises 30, percent off the low, which it's already done. It's up, as I said, up 40. So these two barriers are gone, 30 and 38.2 percent. Then this may rate the 2020 drop as three waves, which means we're still in the 09 bull market, which sounds kind of hard to believe. But so let's go uh, one more. And, and by the way, uh, here we see the crossing of the uh, well, it went past 23, 30, 32. We're up to 50 percent. And by the way, uh, I'll repeat that story back after the 87 crash. I called the late Art Merrill, who was the quantitative guru in the Market Technicians Association at the time. And I said, hey, Art. OK, hey, we're going to break the other side. Yes, please do. Bill, Bill Meridian, folks, Cycles Research. We'll be right back. If you're in the CD market and looking for a secure investment, the Tiger First Mortgage Program may work for you. The security for these first mortgages are building lots in the Tax Opportunity Zone in St. Petersburg, Florida. The Tax Act of 2018 set up tax-free zones across the country where you can build and hold for 10 years and pay no tax on the profits, which makes these lots valuable. The investment is anywhere from $30,000 to $75,000. The interest paid is 7% yearly paid on a monthly basis. According to Bankrate.com, the best rate for a four-year CD in the country as of February 20th is 3.1%. A $50,000 investment at a normal four-year CD rate of 3.1% would give you income of $1,550 per year or $6,200 over the four-year period. That same $50,000 investment in the Tiger First Mortgage Program would give you $3,500 per year or $14,000 over the four years. Which would you prefer, $6,200 or $14,000 of interest on your investment? If you would like more information about the Tiger First Mortgage Program, you can call me at 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The gold report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. 
New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, GDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. The Bull Bear Trading Hour with Tom and Tommy O'Brien. Next. Okay, we're back, folks, and we're talking with Bill Meridian, Cycles Research. Bill, do you want to continue, please? Sure. We're looking at the S&P monthly graph right now, mm -hmm. and uh, you can see these two huge moves down and then this rebound back up above the trend line. And you can also, again, see the 50% level being penetrated. So here you go. Here's a contrary opinion by signal. I love these magazine covers. They're right about 80, 85% of the time. There's the bear leading the parade um, <laughs> on the cover of the spectator. And uh, here's another buy signal. Insiders are buying stock at the highest rates in 1999. You see that blue line shooting straight up. They're saying, boy, these, these are bargain prices uh, for our going concerns. So they must be quite confident that the fundamentals of their companies are sound and they're using this depression in prices to buy. That is another buy signal. And um, here's gold seasonality. I always start with this grass graph and you can see where we are right now. We're in April, which is mildly bullish. Uh, May is fairly bullish. And then you notice June. June and October are the two week months for gold seasonally. So we're headed into uh, after May, a week period. But uh, the, these April, May, June months, uh, Q2 are really not very strong for the yellow metal. So let's look at the dynamic cycles. On the top, you see the weekly cycle coming up to a sell signal, a little red bar. Those are right at about 67 percent of the time. And then you see the buy signal out there in May. And you see the uh, monthly cycle goes up. In fact, it goes up through the end of the year with some slight depressions, like you see that little pullback in June. So it looks like I think we're going in. Uh, the trend is up. We're going into a trading range. But I still think the target on the upside is 1800, 1850. And by the way, one reason it's been easy for me to call gold in my reports is because these two cycles have been synchronized. In other words, they turn up together, they turn down together. They're getting a little bit out of whack now. But it's the reverse of the oil cycles, which have both been pointing down. So let's take a closer look at gold. And uh, that there's the gold breakout. You see that uh, blue rectangle that I've drawn. If you take that height of it and you add it to the breakout point, it's 300 bucks high. Add it to 1550, you get 1850. So that's where the objective is coming from, from the breakout of the plain old technical rectangle. Mm -hmm. Now here, these graphs, by the way, come from my friends uh, Ronnie and Mark over at Incrementum in uh, Vienna, Austria which is a gold fund. And that is the gold price that would be necessary if we were to back every dollar by gold again. And you can see it would take about, uh, we'd have to mark the price of gold up to $22,000 in order to do that. Wow. And uh, here we have, now the, this is the oil monthly cycle, which simply points down. And uh, so I'm not, uh, this uh, rally that we're having right now, uh, I'm not too excited about it. I just spoke to Abu Dhabi and I just got some emails, but they've told me that people are like people got a got a travel business, no money in the bank, no income. Uh, before the gendarmes come, they are skipping town, which is what you do 
uh, in the Middle East, in places like that, you just fly to another country. Mm-hmm. So the situation down there is quite dire because they overspent that huge oil rally, which I warned them not to do when I left. And um, oh, I thought I had some more charts in here, but um, that's it. If there are any questions, if anything uh, I haven't covered. Do you, do you have a question on what, what could be the downside support in the oil? Uh, Bill, do you have any feeling oh, on yeah. that? Oh, yeah. Well, I, I first um, – I my first objective was 23 bucks a barrel. And when I said this back in Q4, Q1, people in the Middle East said, I hope you're not right this time. Was, I was right on the mm-hmm. upside. So um, right now it's uh, – having been through 23, it's actually 17 and 11. And uh, this cycle does not bottom until I think it's November. And so uh, right now, I'd have to say it's $17 a share by November. Hmm. And wow. by the way, uh, I, saw, I saw a study. Oil always declines during pa- pandemics. And I didn't know that. It's just uh, I'm not – we're not uh, – the author did not say there's any causality. But stocks always rise. Stocks always rise and commodities always fall for some odd reason. Whether there's a causal link or not, I do not know. Wow. Well. That certainly defies logic, but if that's what it is, that's what it is. Yeah. But, you know, Bill, we haven't had that many pandemics. Uh, how many sample sizes no. do we have with that? I think it was six. Well, that's, yeah, that's more than two or three. <laughs> yeah. We have one, one other question, and that is, uh, what is your uh, opinion on whether the stocks will make a new high above what we made in um, January? That's a good question. I uh, Well, uh, let me say one of the most important points than I wanted to make. And uh, I would say that's possible for the following reason. One of the most accurate indicators that was has been created uh, uses, uh, you have to visualize this, I don't have a graph of it, but uh, on the uh, vertical axis, it has bearish sentiment. So in other words, it's got a little uh, histogram at the bottom. So if bearish sentiment is 20%, it's, it's 20%. And if it goes up to 50, then the histogram rises. Then they take the money supply in rate of increase uh, in the money supply and invert it. So in other words, a big increase in the money supply, the line is coming down. If that line hits the the bearish uh, sentiment histogram, it's a buy signal. It's very accurate. And it's called the uh, bullseye indicator. It was created by Ned Davis Research a long time ago. And I no longer have access to it, but I keep it in another way. And in other words, if you have tremendous amounts of liquidity available and very negative sentiment, this is very bullish. And I always used to joke with the Arabs and said, if you want to see that in action, you take your wife to the shopping mall to give her thousands of dirhams and come back a few hours later. And uh, mm-hmm. so right now you've got very bearish sentiment and record amounts of credit are being dumped into the system. And it's only a question of where the low is. But this means there'll be enough money for, as the late Ian Notley used to say, for any Tom, Dick, and Harry to buy just about anything. And that's what uh, makes markets go up. So <laughs> so there is certainly – they're creating a, a crucible here. The, all the ingredients are available for um, an asset class appreciation in <laughs> some asset class. I am relatively certain a lot of that is going to go into real estate. Because the real estate mm-hmm. cycle does not top until 2022, 2023. Mm-hmm. And we're right now in the accelerating portion of that fit, we're in an accelerating phase of that cycle. And uh, we've already seen it going into gold. So I mm-hmm. think stocks are higher. I don't know if they're going to make a new high or not. I kind of tend to doubt it. Okay. Now, the question we have is um, oh, we have one other question coming in from the den here. Hold on one second here. Um, the, the, the way he thought February, does you expect 2020 to be a down year for the S&P? Yeah, it's a year ending in zero. Okay. It, um, but you have to remember, it was at a very elevated spot in December 31st. So. Okay. Okay, we have one other question. That is about the possibility of hyperinflation like they had in Germany back in the 30s. Do you see that in the horizon anywhere? Well, no, I don't. But in that uh, in that case, I'm taking the advice of the professors I know and have studied with at the Ludwig von Mises Institute at Auburn, and they're all saying uh, no. And they've all got different reasons for saying no, but this, the major reason is there's always a demand for the dollar. It's the international currency. These other currencies in which uh, there have been 
hyperinflations in countries like Zimbabwe, countries like that, that was not a, an international currency in great demand. So I'd have to pr say probably not. Okay, folks, thanks for joining us, Bill, and we'll have you on sure. again soon. We hope you sure. travel safe and, uh, you know, okay. stay safe, my friend. Okay, Bill Meridian, okay. folks, Cycles Research, Vienna, Austria. We'll see you folks tomorrow, and may God bless. I'm certain you are or strive to be one of the best of the best at everything you do in life. It's the most common trait that we tigers and tigresses share. If you're looking to become the best of the best when it comes to managing your money, let me teach you to do what most wealth managers tell you can't be done, which is how to time the markets. I'm Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, and for the last 12 months, Timer Digest has been tracking my newsletter signals, which have earned me the ranking as their number one market timer in the nation for the S&P 500 for the last 12 six and three months timer digest also ranks me as the number one market timer for gold as well the fact is markets can be timed and i'll teach you the exact set of tools that i use that has transformed me into one of the best at what i do sign up for mastering probability today by clicking on the newsletter tab on the homepage of tfnn.com and get immediate access to workshops where i take you step by step how to use an extraordinary set of tools as well as provide great market calls too. sign up today if you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. With markets trading with extreme volatility and peaks and troughs everywhere, regardless of what you're looking at in the markets, this is a great time to see the type of analysis Basil Chapman delivers for his subscribers every market day with the opening call newsletter. Basil has been analyzing markets, providing his take for subscribers to his trading services since 1984. Every morning, Basil publishes an update for his subscribers, along with weekend and evening updates when warranted. The opening call provides traders a daily market overview with regard to the direction of the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, along with specific recommendations, including stops and targets. You also gain instant access to Basil's subscriber webinar archive from earlier this year, a dark cloud cover, and essential market analysis. Ride the Chapman wave today by signing up for the opening call newsletter on the front page of TFNN.com under the newsletter tab. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Sign up today. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Okay, folks, it's me again. I was so <laughs> intent on trying to get this Google email up again that I forgot that there was another segment coming. So uh, I certainly apologize. But, uh, oh, the frustrations of the technical part just uh, drive me quite crazy. All right, let's talk just a little bit about Bill was talking about. Uh, you know, there's a lot of 50% retracements here that we're looking at here in the market. We've had a couple that I think are important. I I posted the one about the uh, – uh, the index, the uh, uh, the bull bear, not bull bear, the uh, high grade bond index, making a beautiful A B C D pattern. I wanted to just to show you a couple others that uh, that popped up that uh, made perfect A B C Ds. It looked real interesting because they were happening right at the three eight two retracement. You'll notice here that this is the Dow Jones transportation also stopped. Uh, exactly at the 382 retracement that is itself we've seen quite a few of these but another one that a lot of folks trade and that is this uh the russell 2000 in fact that's the second 
best stock index to trade right after the E-mini S&P. It's E-mini S&P for open interest, and then you have the Russell, and then you have the NASDAQ, and then you have the Dow Jones. But uh, you'll see that we had a 382 retracement with an ABCD structure in the Russell also. So that's uh, what we're looking at. Folks, I have no clue of what the Federal Reserve does or what they do. I hear all kinds of stories. I read about it a little bit. All I know is that they have they've taken out uh, they basically capitalized the, uh, the the US Treasury basically and I guess we're going to go into what a Japan type thing but you know the patterns are still there they're still moving nicely so as long as you're trading the patterns and putting your stops in that's what they're there for they're there for risk control they do have a probability of showing what's going to happen next but that's only about 70 percent but they tell you how much you have to risk whether you're wrong or not and that's one of the best things and they repeat over and over again and these patterns are uh, repeating over and over again. Uh, I do have a, uh, I'll post that uh, the forecast for today, but remember folks, it's just a, uh, it's just a forecast. It doesn't really mean very much. We'll get right up here.